Well, hi, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler, presented by Bank Corp South. Only one game for the Golden Eagles this past week, but it was a big one at Regreen Coliseum, a Saturday afternoon battle with longtime rival Louisiana Tech. It took overtime to do it, but the Golden Eagles pick up a 73-71 to victory. And, uh, Doc, it wasn't uh, always pretty last Saturday at Regreen Coliseum, but uh, your guys able to reach down deep inside and find a way to pull it out in a, in a tough ball game against Louisiana Tech. Well, again, John, I think there was two or three reasons. And, and any time we play Eric's team, it's going to be tough because I think defensively they're about as good as there is in the league. And, and then the one thing that they do on the offensive end that we have a, 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 you know trouble with is them in the offensive rebounds because they go so hard. We play such a small team. A lot of times the Western Kentuckys, the Old Dominions, and, and, and Louisiana Tech are I think the three best offensive rebounding teams. And in the first half of that game, uh, we did struggle. We, we, I thought our defense was as good as it could be, but we gave up seven or eight offensive rebounds in the first half. And that's what kind of kept them in the ball game. Uh, but give our guys credit. Both teams, you know, struggled in the first half offensively, uh, but both teams scored close to 50 points in the second half. And, and, and I thought our defense was still good. Uh, but we turned the basketball over more than we normally do. And then we had some guys uh, step up and make some shots. They had some guys step up and make some shots, and it was just a good ball game. Got up six or seven, they got up. Uh, but, you know, uh, we didn't finish the game as well as we would have needed to. If we'd have made some free throws and, and just hung on to the basketball a little bit, then, uh, you know, we may have been able to have won that game in, in, in regulation. But uh, give them credit. They made some plays. and. Uh, took it in the overtime, and then we, uh, you know, found a way to win it in overtime. They, uh, you got control of the game there late in the ball game and, and were able to win it in overtime. But in that second half, what did you like you guys were doing that, that allowed you to get that lead and kind of keep that little bit of a cushion between you and Louisiana Tech? Well, more than anything, John, I, I think when we moved the basketball and, and we got it going side to side, and, uh, you know, our offense was pretty good. But again, I think I'm playing some guys way too many minutes. We start standing around, we get tired, and the ball quits moving. And then we end up uh, taking some tough shots when we don't need to take some tough shots. But, uh, you know, the thing, that, the thing that I liked, again, is we got down, and, uh, you know, when we needed to make some plays, we're down four. Drain hits a big three, gets us back to one point ball game. And I think it may be in 64, 64 to 60. And then he hits a three and gets it to 64, 63 or something like that. And then uh, it, it turns into a possession game again. Drain had a career high 22 points and maybe the biggest three of the night uh, came there late in the ball game. Gave you I think a 70 to 66 lead, a one point ball game. Shot clock going down. He's got a guy in his face. He had a big three to make it a four point ball game. You know, uh, in practice, he probably uh, he probably gets the shot off about as well as anybody I've ever had on a contested shot. And uh, you know, uh, that's just a player making a play. It has nothing to do with anything but a player making a play, and and he made it. And, uh, you know, like I said, we got up and then we just wasn't, uh, you know, we, we, we shot our foot ourself in the foot a few times and made it a lot tougher than we should have. Well, the Golden Eagles getting ready to play two more home games starting tonight. It'll be the Roadrunners of UTSA. Then on Saturday afternoon, the, uh, the Miners of UTEP. So we'll talk about them on our uh, final segment with Doc today. But uh, coming up, I want you to sit back, enjoy this week's features, and then we'll talk about what's coming up for the Golden Eagles. So enjoy the features. We'll be back in just a bit. Uh, what influenced me to be an Golden Eagle mainly was Spoon and uh, what he talked about in the future of building up and um, actually helping the seniors come up uh, this senior year and helping them um, strive to be the best they can be this senior year. I definitely knew about the history of Coach Spoon, but um, most of what he uh, influenced me to, um, what, what influenced my decision to come down here was um, basically the future he told me that we, uh, we are able to build. Like with me, Crunchy, Tyler, and um, and Shaq, he said we can have a big bright future for it. And we uh, we actually come in, we all try to work together. Like in, during the weight room, we all try to lift together and build chemistry. So I think it's going to be, I think the future is going to be very scary for Southern Miss. 
Well, other sports I played, I never played, I never actually played football, but I did play a little baseball. And I was pretty good at it, but I don't know, like I always just had a love for basketball and it just drifted off. So I always just like, my eighth grade year, I locked in on basketball. I was a decent basketball player and more of just handling the ball and stuff, but uh, I think my ninth grade year is when I took the extra step to do, put in extra work and uh, put in more work than everybody else. Uh, some guys I looked up to is, um, my dad, my high school coach, Michael Howell, and James Harden. I like the model of my game of James Harden. And my dad always, him and, him and my coach, they always gave me mental um, aspects of the game to uh, put into my game on the court. So yeah, definitely. As a freshman, I feel like I need to improve in every area. You know, it's, it's, def it's always an uh, opportunity to learn more. And Doc Sally, he always comes with a different piece of advice to give me every day. So I feel like I need to improve in every area. Well, majoring, I would probably like to, um, I'm, I'm thinking about um, being a business major and I want to uh, go into the field of entrepreneurship. I maybe want to work on my own fashion line or something like that. Uh, it's meant a lot. Uh, play for the fans, the community, and uh, play for uh, Doc Salad and um, least of all and most of all is play for my brother. You know, uh, one another, we all play for one another. And I know the seniors have been through a lot since they've been here. So just playing alongside them and, and trying to help in any way I can, it's been it's been a, it's been a pleasure. When I was younger, uh, I, I did explore some sports. I played baseball, just peewee things, you know. I, pl I played baseball, I played soccer. I never was into football, that was my brother's sport. Um, but track and field was sort of like a, a staple in the family because it's like all you need is yourself and a pair of running shoes. You don't have to buy a, a equipment or a ball or stuff like that. So it was just, it was easy. And when we were moving, I mean, you find a field and train in it, you know. So it was, uh, it was always something that sort of pulled me towards track and field, and it was just my sport, and I, I kind of took to it. At a younger age, I explored a lot. I did distance, I did sprints, uh, and I always jumped. And I had, I don't know, I just had a, a natural ability to spring and just jump <laughs> jump far so that that uh later in life became my specialty and i just specialized in long jump and triple jump it looks easy because all you need to do is run fast hit the board jump as far as you can but in order to hit certain marks you have to implement certain techniques with foot position, hip position, uh, alignment of the, the body. It's uh, very mathematical in a way, though I don't like to think of it that way. It's uh, more mechanical, you know? Um, a lot of technique is involved in getting those links that you would strive for. I feel like my ultimate goal is to definitely pursue pursue track and field uh, at the professional level, uh, go further, travel the world uh, competing. Um, like the Olympics would be like icing on the cake, you know? But um, yeah, I just, I really like the competition of it all and um, meeting those, those links, those numbers, the distances, um, that, that's my goal, you know? Me and Coach, we've just really been focused on hitting like the new, the new elite sort of barrier for our college athlete, which is 17 meters in the triple jump and eight meters in the long, and that uh, sort of equates to like 26 feet in the long jump and um, was that 56 feet in the triple jump around that area. Um, and that I don't know, that's world class almost. Um, you have to be a very special athlete in order to achieve those sort of uh, links with distances with your jumps and things of that nature. 
The team aspect is a lot of fun. Uh, it sucks to train alone. <laughs> it's actually really hard to train alone, but um, when you, you're all hurting as a group, it sort of like unifies you and you kind of see that one goal and the, the goal is to win, you know, at your special event, you know. If, if you have teammates, it's, it's a competition between each other, but um, we're also there to represent the university as a whole. So it's really cool. been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. You got me falling hard, sweet baby, you got me falling hard for you. And still, I felt this way before, you know it's true. And still, you got me more and more, oh, you got me falling hard. <laughs> A little bit about my background is uh, I'm an athletic trainer for 11 years so far. I went to school at University of North Carolina at Charlotte, did my master's degree through Nova Southeastern University. Um, I spent two years with the U.S. military working as an athletic trainer for them. I went back four years at Charlotte with women's soccer. I uh, transitioned two years with George Mason University with their track and field and swim and dive team. Um, the last two years prior to Southern Miss, I did Richard Childers Racing. So I was an athletic trainer for a NASCAR organization with their pit crews. Uh, now I'm at Southern Miss with men's basketball team. So uh, what attracted me to Southern Miss is really um, our, our associate director, Todd McCall, um, kind of a big name in athletic training. You know, when you get to work for people that are, are as smart as him and have uh, the facilities that we have at Southern Miss for athletic training wise, our doctors that we have at Southern Bone and Joint, it was a really attractive position for me to come take. So it was something that I jumped on when I, the possibility arose to me. Trust is definitely one of the hardest things to earn with athletes, uh, no matter what level you're at, uh, whether you're at high school, whether you're college or the pros. Um, and I think the biggest thing for us as athletic trainers, any medical professional, even the doctors that they, they hardly see, um, is, is just getting that rapport with an athlete. And every athlete's different, you know. Um, none of our seniors are gonna be the same as our freshmen. Our freshmen are gonna come in and they're gonna be really quiet, where your seniors are just outspoken at this point. Uh, so it's a little easier to earn trust from a senior. Uh, it's really just getting on a personal level with them. You know, you, you've gotta be on a professional relationship, but you also have to build a personal relationship with the athlete. Uh, if, if you can get around, you can joke around with them and you know, you can just talk on a personal level with them. They feel a little more comfortable with you professionally. Uh, but I think the, the big thing is when we get in the athletic training room and it's in a professional setting is when you portray confidence to them, they have confidence in you. Uh, no medical professional is going to get the answer right every time. You know, it could be one of those things that we just got to wait and see what comes up. But I think as long as you're confident in, in your abilities and you're confident in your, uh, your rehab plan and your, your treatment plan, they gain confidence in you and they, they understand that it just it takes the time. I think what I like most about being an athletic trainer at a college is just the kids. You know, the, the athletes that come in, you see them when they're a freshman. Uh, they're right out of school, they're about as raw as they can be, but you, you see them in some of their formative years and you, wait, you, you watch them mature over those four years that they're here and just to see them, the way they grow up and once they finally get out of college and they move on, I, I think that's one of the biggest satisfying things about being in a college. Um, you know, working in a professional setting, those guys are there, it's a job. They, 
they're just there to, to work, honestly. And, and these kids come in and they're, they're looking for somebody to be a mentor, they're looking for somebody to help. Uh, and we kind of get them at their lowest of their low. If you, if you got a kid that breaks a leg or tears an ACL, it really doesn't get any lower for them because they can't play sports. And that's what they came to college to do. So when you, when you get somebody and you rehab them for that six months and they go from as low as you can get to now as high as you can get because they hit a game winning goal or a game winning basket, you know, get the strike out to end the ninth inning. I, I think as an athletic trainer, that is the most rewarding aspect of it, is just to see these kids come and succeed. Basically, the reason why I got the Bullfrog nickname was when I was a student manager for Doc. I remember one day, it just it was out of the blue. I walked into the office, Doc was in his office, um, and, and it was one of the weirdest things. Doc doesn't usually listen to music in his office. It may have been a commercial or whatever, but all I know is I walked by his office, and, uh, and for some reason that Jeremiah Was a Bullfrog song was on his TV, radio, something. And as I'm walking down the hallway, I'm the only one there, and then I hear, from down the other end of the hallway, Doc yelling, Bullfrog. And I knew that since I was the only one there, he was asking for me. So once I went down there and, and talked to him, that name stuck with me ever since. I've been here at Southern Miss for about five years. I've been here since 2013 as a student. I graduated in May of 2017 with my bachelor's degree in sport management. and. And I was a student manager for Doc my last two years. I graduated um, and I got to work with Patrick Stewart last year with the equipment staff as a GA. And I stayed close with Doc in the program and he hired me back for this year for my second year as a GA and I'll be graduating in May of 2019. And everything's been fun about, about what I do. I just love Southern Miss, bleed black and gold, have the most pride you could have, I think, for Southern Miss and, and myself and you know everything I do for the campus, the university, for the people here is is fun for me. And you know, ultimate goal for me is you know to continue to work for Southern Miss and hopefully stay on as long as I can here in any capacity. And I would say if 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 I got the chance to move up, maybe my aspirations would be to be a uh, director of basketball operations and uh, maybe work in a front office one day. You know, being from Harrison, Ohio, which is about 18 miles northwest of Cincinnati, you know, I ended up down here mainly in part due to academic scholarships. Um, out of high school, I was able and, and fortunate enough to get academic scholarships to attend Southern Miss. And, you know, my passion and love for Southern Miss began as a kid watching Brett Favre, you know, with the Green Bay Packers and just Knowing, knowing the stuff about him, I knew that he went to Southern Miss and visiting family and friends around this area. You know, we would always come down 49 and go past the rock on our way to pedal. And I would just, you know, just kind of picture myself being here one day. And, you know, it just worked out to where I got some academic scholarships to come down here. And, you know, went from there, was a student for two years. And then I told myself I want to do something bigger. so. I came over to the basketball program and they hired me on as a student manager and I just ran with it and, and that's why I'm here today. To wear the black and gold is, is a tremendous honor in my opinion, you know, coming here as a student, you know, as a fan, just knowing that I'm a part of this university, having graduated, having worked for men's basketball and different areas, it, it means a lot to me to be able to put this on and go home and walk around in Ohio and people ask me, oh, Southern Miss, you know, and I get to tell them about my experience and explain to them what we're about. And most of the time they know who we are from back in the old days. So, you know, just being able to wear the black and gold every day is, ama is an amazing feeling to be, on to be honest with you because I have great pride about this university. I just love it.
And we're back, Southern Miss Sports Today with Coach Doc Sadler, presented by Bank Corp South. Hope you enjoyed our features. You got to see a couple of guys that are a big part of this Golden Eagle basketball team, trainer Chris Clapton and also a freshman guard, Gabe Watson, out of St. Joe's High School up in Jackson. Uh, Doc, talk about those guys. First, Chris, his first year as the trainer with the, the Golden Eagles, and that's a tough job for anybody. Chris does a good job with it. Well, he does. You know, I've been very blessed uh, in my whole career to have, have have good trainers and uh, you know we lost UG last year so you've got to hire someone else and you got to give Todd uh, Todd uh, McCall, McCall uh, yeah. uh, you know a lot of credit for finding somebody and but you never know but uh, there's not anybody that I'd be more pleased with or ha could have been more pleased with than with Chris he does an excellent job uh, he keeps our guys healthy uh, you know and he and Alex Richards both are are guys that are important in this basketball team and uh, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, uh, Chris hasn't had a lot to do uh, because we've been pretty injury free, but because of the job that he does do, and that's uh, that's the reason, you know, he's staying ahead of things. So uh, he knows it's coming down a stretch. Nobody feels good right now. Uh, he just got to keep them on the floor and, and get them feeling as best he can, and he does a great job of doing that. Next to the coaches, he probably spends as more time with the team as anybody. Yeah, probably, and unfortunately, it's not as much as uh, you would like because so many times the kids wait till they're hurt, and he could keep them out, uh, keep them off the out of the training room even more if they would go to him uh, a little bit earlier. But uh, Again, Chris, is, uh, he's, he's been unbelievable, and uh, again, I'm very, very fortunate to have him in our program. Gabe Watson, he's a young man who has come in and played uh, a lot of minutes as a true freshman at uh, Southern Miss, and a guy you can put in there sometimes to, to maybe uh, give some rest to Cortez Edwards or, or Tyree Griffin. He really is. You know, last week uh, I played him in the first half. I didn't get him in uh, the second half. But, you know, I have a lot of confidence. And, you know, uh, the thing about him is is he made some shots against SMU, and I haven't forgot that. Uh, it's been a little bit more of a struggle for him. But the thing about Gabe is you know you're going to get a consistent effort. He's an unbelievable kid, uh, and he knows so many different positions, which that is really, really a, a credit to him and his basketball feel. And, uh, you know, I, I really think he's going to, to really have three years uh, of really good basketball ahead of him. Steve Henson and the Roadrunners of UTSA, you're going to take them on in just a, a little bit here at Regreen uh, Coliseum. Steve's done a good job. Did not inherit a, a team that had a lot of veteran guys. He's brought in some young guys that really have started to build that Roadrunner program. And uh, they're as hot as anybody in Conference USA right now and scoring a lot of points. Well... They've got two players, a Waz kid and a Jackson kid, that uh, may be as good a two players on a team as far as offensively as there is in, in, the, in the country, not just our league, in the country. Uh, you know, they're scoring 50 to 60 points every game between the two of them. So, you know, we've, uh, we've had a good week of practice, but as, as a coach, I know, uh, you know, the practices that we've had this week is not going to be as, as good as what they show us here in a little bit. Uh, so hopefully we, we've prepared as well as we can to do a good job tonight. And, uh, you know, we got to keep those two guys. If we can keep them two guys in the 40s, uh, then we got a chance to win the game. Then on Saturday, uh, 2 o'clock ball game at Reed Grand Coliseum, you take on uh, one of your old uh, teams, the Miners of UTEP. They're in a bit of a rebuilding program, but it looks like that they're getting better and better. They're playing some teams pretty tough here down the stretch. You know they've been in every ball game pretty much, and uh, that's a that's a credit to Rodney. And uh, you know, uh, after the game tonight, we'll turn our attention to them. I've not seen. Uh, I'm superstitious, John. I, I don't watch the team on Saturday until uh, Thursday night after after we play uh, San Antonio, and so. Uh, I'll get a chance to look at them for the first time uh, after the game tonight, and uh, we'll spend some time tomorrow morning uh, getting ready for them, and then uh, practice a little bit later uh, tomorrow, and then get ready for a 2 o'clock game on Saturday. Well, congratulations on the win over Louisiana Tech, and uh, look forward to seeing the Eagles get back on the court here in just a little bit against the Roadrunners. Hey, thank you, John. All right, Coach Doc Sadler and the Golden Eagles. It's the Roadrunners of UTSA tonight at Reed Green Coliseum. you still got time to get there, so come out and support the Golden Eagles Saturday afternoon, the Miners of UTEP. That'll do it. Don't forget on Mondays we're at Walk-Ons in Hattiesburg, so come on by, visit with us on the Golden Eagles.
Eagle Hotline. We'll sit around, talk a little Golden Eagle basketball. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you next time. Another inside look into Southern Miss basketball. been thinking about it since I was a kid. Mom would be so proud. If I could do it for a living. Using my mom's recipes to open up a cupcake shop. For my daughter to go to vet school. Singing karaoke in all 50 states. Captain in my own shrimp boat. Tell us what you dream about. With the right loan or savings plan, we can make it a reality, no matter how crazy. That's right, thank you. Thank you very much. Keeping you within reach of what matters most. We're Bancorp South, and we're right where you are. You call me Hey Southern Miss fans, it's Toby Barker, Mayor of Hattiesburg. Mickey Spagnola once wrote, if you're going to war and you get to choose first, choose Southern Mississippi. Always choose Southern Mississippi. Don't fight Southern Mississippi because no matter how hard you fight, those folks will fight harder. His words capture the character of our institution and our city. We here in Hattiesburg are writing a new story, one where we rise to our challenges with great excitement one where we push our city to reach its potential, and most importantly, one where there's real partnership between the University of Southern Mississippi and the city of Hattiesburg. Southern Miss is vital to our city's success, from the quality of life it provides through athletics and the arts to the talent it cultivates in the classroom. We share a common destiny. Hattiesburg is proud to be Mississippi's college city, and we hope as we go forward, you'll join us in supporting our Golden Eagles this season as they go to the top.